this is Katie. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a physical health update. A lot of you guys know that about two months ago, I started getting sick and I made a video about it back then, maybe six weeks ago or so, just kind of telling you guys like the initial idea of what was going on, what I was diagnosed with and my symptoms and stuff like that. But over the last six weeks, I've been seeing a lot more doctors. I've gotten several procedures done and I have more answers and more diagnoses. And so I wanted to share that with you guys today, let you guys know what the doctor said, what I'm diagnosed with and like what my plans going forward are because a lot of stuff in my life has been changing and is going to continue to change and so I just wanted to share this with you guys had like a really vulnerable open like I'm, I'm really gonna tell you things that so far I've really only told like some people in my family and a couple of my friends. And so this is just me being really vulnerable and I wanna share with you guys what's going on. And so I really hope that you're subscribed because I do lifestyle videos, travel videos, mental health videos, and then now my physical health journey is also going to be part of my YouTube channel. So I hope that you hit that subscribe button just down below. And uh, yeah, let's just get into this physical health update video. Okay, so this, this video is very hard for me to record because I'm going to tell you a lot of really personal, scary, vulnerable things. So I hope that we can, you know, like be nice in the comments and stuff because I am being really vulnerable in this video. But okay, so, okay. There, so much has happened, so much has happened. I'm going to give a little preface of my first health video that I did like what, a month or six weeks ago. I'm gonna do like a mini version of that and then I'm gonna tell you what has happened since then. So on November 19th or 20th or so, I was about to go to sleep in my car and I kind of felt a little like nauseated in my throat which is not super uncommon for me because I do have digestive issues, but I just was like, ah, I kind of feel like I'm gonna throw up. I didn't, I fell asleep, whatever. I woke up the next morning and I tried to eat a bite of food or have a sip of water or something. And when I swallowed food or water, I felt like I was getting hit in the chest with a baseball. It was one of the most severe pains that I've ever had and it was very alarming and it was scary and it was very painful. Like the rest of that day, I barely got any food or water down. So the next day I went to urgent care because at this point I was in like Missouri. I was driving from the Northwest where I was most of the summer and fall and I was driving East. And so I ended up in Missouri. I went to urgent care and the person there, I don't remember if she was a doctor or like a PA or something. I don't fully remember uh, what her title was, but she said that it seemed like a bad Bad bout of acid reflux and so she gave me some medicine but she's like you definitely need to go get more tests done because apparently with acid reflux it's more of a symptom of something else going on and so she's like you need to go see like your GP you're gonna probably have to go to a gastro you need to go see more doctors and so since my health insurance is in New York because that's where I grew up and that's where I still use like my legal address is technically New York and so my health insurance is in New York and so I had to drive back here to Long Island to go to doctors and stuff that were covered by my insurance I think that's kind of like the gist of the last video. I explained a lot more obviously in that last video. So if you want to see that one first, you can click up here or even if you want to watch that one after just to get more details. But essentially went to urgent care. They told me I had a bad bout of acid reflux, but I needed to go see more doctors. So I got back to New York less than a week later, like two or three days later, I got back here because I just like drove as much as I could every day because then it was going day to day where I was barely eating and barely drinking. And by barely eating, I mean maybe getting a couple bites of food down a day and drinking maybe a cup of water a day, two cups tops for that next week or so because it was so painful to swallow. I cannot explain. I mean, the only explanation I can really give you is like someone was blowing up a balloon in my chest and then a professional pitcher threw a baseball at it. Like that's the severity of the pain that I had like right here. And it was really scary, but it really only was happening when I was swallowing food or water. So I just like was barely eating, barely drinking. So then I got back to New York and I'm staying with people that I know. So I am staying in a house. So I got back here, I don't know, like Tuesday or Wednesday or something. And I had a doctor appointment with a GP and he basically said what the urgent care said. He said, yeah, it seems like a really bad bout of acid reflux. And then he said, we definitely need to get you more tests done because it could be an ulcer. It could be a hernia. It could be a bunch of different things. And so we need to see 
why you have the acid reflux so then we can understand how to treat it. So the first thing that I did was I got, well, I got two EKGs so they could test my heart. I got one in urgent care in Missouri and I got one in New York. My EKGs were fine. So my heart was fine. I also got an x-ray done in Missouri and that was fine. And then I got blood work done in New York. That was fine. So then the next step was for me to get an ultrasound or a sonogram. And so I did that. It was like of my stomach and all like my organs like my gallbladder and stuff like that to see what's going on. So all they found in the sonogram, I got that maybe, you know, a few days later or so. So this is still like late November. All they found in the sonogram was my liver tumor. I don't remember if I've ever told you guys that I have a tumor in my liver. I don't know if I've ever told you. I can't remember. I found that out accidentally when I was like 22 or something. I was kind of having a little trouble breathing, went to the doctor. They wanted to do some tests and they ended up finding a very non-cancerous liver tumor. Like the type it is can never turn into cancer. It's just a mass in my liver the size of a baseball. We're just keeping the baseball metaphors going on, but it is the size of a baseball in my liver. I found that out over 10 years ago. I've known that that was there. They're not going to take it out because it's very non-cancerous. And so all they found was that tumor in my liver which I already knew about so they didn't really find anything new so the next step was to see a gastro a gastroenterologist and I went to see one and I made an appointment to get an endoscopy because that's the next step is for them to put a little camera down my throat and to check out you know like my stomach and my large intestines and my esophagus and like everything here. They ended up kind of fast tracking that endoscopy for me because still at this point I was barely eating. I was in a lot of pain. The medicine that the urgent care gave me and then also my doctor, I think I forgot to say that too, my doctor um, on Long Island also gave me medicine so I was on two medicines um, and they did start to kick in so I was able to eat a little bit more but still very bland food. If you guys know anything about acid reflux, which I did not until I had to deal with this myself, I knew nothing about it, but if you ever deal with it, you know that kind of to keep it at bay, a lot of people have to eat pretty bland meals. And some people can eat more than others, obviously, but some people have to cut out other food groups. So spicy food, fatty food, dairy, you know, certain fruits and vegetables that are higher in acid, stuff like that. There's a lot of foods that you have to cut out to keep your acid reflux at bay. And especially when you're having a flare up, like you've got to cut out a lot of those foods. And so my diet, I could barely eat because it hurt. But then also on top of that, I had to be on a very, very strictly bland, bland diet. So my doctor was able to fast track the endoscopy, which still took like a week or two, but I was able to get an endoscopy, I don't know, maybe early December-ish. So I got the endoscopy and this is the part that's really hard to tell you guys. I have told, you know, a couple people in my family and a couple of my friends, but it is very scary for me to make this public. I don't know why I put makeup on today because I'm probably going to start crying. So when they did the endoscopy about a month ago, the doctor told me right when I woke up from the anesthesia, because they put you under for endoscopies, um, he told me right when I woke up that they found another tumor in my stomach. And it was kind of like a haze at first because I just woke up from anesthesia. I remember when I found out about my liver tumor when I was like 22 or something, 23, I remember freaking out so much. Like, you just don't want to hear the doctor say the word tumor, you know? And then when they told me that my liver tumor was the size of a baseball, I was just freaking out. I think I spent like a year just kind of like scratching at where my tumor is. Not like severe or, or leaving marks or anything, but just almost like, I don't, I don't know. It was just like, it was so scary to find that out back then. But then eventually when, you know, they really explained that it's non-cancerous, that it's, it's not harmful. When they explained that it still took me like a year or so to stop thinking about it all the time. So then in, you know, early mid December, when I got this endoscopy and they found a stomach tumor, it was just like really hard to wrap my head around that and really scary to find that out because like, I was just having such severe symptoms and I was in so much pain and I was already scared of what was going on. So then to hear tumor, it's just a lot. 
So that's what they found in my endoscopy. They also found a little inflammation in my stomach and they did a bunch of biopsies of my esophagus, of the tumor of my stomach. They did not find a hernia. They did not find an ulcer. My gallbladder's fine. You know, those are kind of the top three most common reasons that people have uh, like really bad acid reflux. All of that was fine. The only thing they found in my endoscopy was another tumor in my stomach and then some inflammation in my stomach. Maybe a little like redness and inflammation in my esophagus as well, I don't remember. So when I woke up, the doctor told me and essentially the next step was to get a CAT scan because they didn't know why I had this tumor and they didn't even know if that's the cause of my acid reflux. So the next step was to get a CAT scan. So that took another week or two to be able to get that with my insurance and everything. So I got the CAT scan about another week or two later and what they found was that, this is just really hard for me to talk about. They found that my liver tumor grew and I remember, again, when I was in my early 20s, when they found it, they kind of said that the only reason it would ever, ever be a concern is if it grew. But that, like, way, way, way majority of the time, like, the type of tumor I have, you just leave it and it's fine. But that it would only be a cause of concern if it grew. And so now it's, you know, 12, 13 years later, it grew. So now maybe it's the size of a softball or so. You know, it grew, like, a couple centimeters in each way or, like, a centimeter or two in each way. And what they could tell from the cat scan about my stomach tumor is that um, i forget what they call it they call it a mass effect i think where essentially the cat scan revealed that the stomach tumor seemed to be the result of something pushing on my stomach and obviously the easy assumption is that my liver tumor is growing and it's pushing on my stomach but we don't know so i need to get more tests done so during all that time, I was still waiting for my endoscopy biopsy results. So I went to my doctor a week ago and he told me that my stomach tumor is benign, which is great. But then he did find something in my esophagus. So what he was able to diagnose me with because of the biopsy results and the endoscopy results is called eosinophilic esophagitis. It's, it's hard for me to say. Eosinophilic esophagitis, um, which is abbreviated EOE. So just to like read you the Google definition of what EOE is, it's a chronic disease of the esophagus, which is the muscular tube that carries food and liquids from your mouth to your stomach. So this tube, when you swallow, the food and the water go down your esophagus. EOE means that the white blood cells called eosinophils build up in your esophagus. This causes damage and inflammation, which can cause pain and lead to trouble swallowing and food getting stuck in your throat. It is rare. It's newly recognized as of like the 1990s. And most symptoms in adults is trouble swallowing, food getting stuck, reflux, heartburn, and chest pain. So when I was at my doctor appointment last week, right before he told me about the EOE, he said something like, didn't you tell me that it kind of feels like you're choking a lot or that you have food stuck in your throat a lot? And I was like, well, a lot of the time when I eat, I how I explain it at least, a lot of the times when I eat, I feel full in my throat. So I guess that could kind of be a synonym for like feeling like food is stuck or feeling like you're choking because a lot of the times I eat, it's like how you feel really full in your stomach, but I feel it in my throat. Like my throat gets a little tight. I sometimes get like nauseated and I've had that for so long. And I thought that that was just part of my gastroparesis because I also was diagnosed with gastroparesis a long time ago in my early twenties. And I have digestion issues and food allergies and stuff. I just kind of thought that it was part of that, but I guess it's, part of the EOE. And so he told me I have EOE that he was able to find out through the biopsy and the endoscopy and everything. It doesn't seem to be from the research that I did. It doesn't seem to be something that goes away. It seems to be something that you just kind of manage forever. And the treatment for EOE is some medication that I've already been on, but he increased the dose. And the other main treatment, at least to start with, is completely changing your diet. And again, I've had a lot of food allergies and sensitivities and stuff even growing up. So I've changed my diet a million times. That is not anything new for me. However, the things that I have to cut out for acid reflux and for EOE, it's a lot. 
it's a lot. So for the acid reflux, this is where it gets a little confusing. My doctor basically told me that the EOE diet is my new priority. And the acid reflux diet, he said that I'm allowed to try to start adding a couple foods back to see how they make me feel which is scary in and of itself because remembering how bad the pain was six weeks ago, two months ago, before the meds really kicked in, remembering how bad that pain was, is it makes it so scary to be like, yeah, I'll try a slice of gluten-free pizza because that pain was just one of the worst pains I've ever had. Again, after a few weeks of the meds and changing my diet, the baseball to the chest pain did disappear. I don't think I said that earlier. That did go away mostly, but now still, even with the strict diet that I'm on, I still feel discomfort. So it's still something that it's just, I'm figuring out. But the medicine definitely did help. I don't think I said that earlier. The medicine definitely, definitely helped. I was on sucralfate or something. I think the other name for it is carafate and I was on omeprazole and I'm still on the omeprazole. But so anyway, so the acid reflux diet where my doctor said that I can start adding some food back to see how I feel, that diet, I said a few of the things earlier, but it's no spicy food, no fatty food, no fried food, no tomatoes, no like garlic and onions, no citrus fruits or like no pineapple, oranges, um, anything like really acidic, um, no dairy and there might be a couple other things. And so, you know, for the last two months, it's been a lot of really bland foods, like no dairy, no spices, no onions, which are like my favorite food. But he said I can start adding those back to see if they affect me or not, because not all of those foods affect everyone with acid reflux. So it's gonna be a lot of trial and error with adding the foods back, but I'm very scared to even try to add some foods back because yeah, I might be able to add most of those foods back in moderation or with my medicine and feel okay, but there's a good chance that I might try a couple of those and it might really hurt. And I'm just really scared of potentially having that really bad pain again. So it's just a scary thing to like eat now. But the EOE diet is actually technically an elimination diet. And so he wants me to be on this strict diet, like the one I'm, I'm gonna tell you in a second, but the things that I have to cut out, I have to completely cut out, like not even have a tiny little bite, nothing. I have to completely cut them out. He said for probably a few months. And then after a few months, I can, you know, add one back, see how I feel, add another one back, see how I feel, which again is very scary when you understand how severe the symptoms could be if the food does affect you. So right now I'm starting to kind of add a little bit back of some of the acid reflux foods, but the foods that I have to completely cut out for the EOE diet, which I haven't done yet, I'm probably gonna start in the next week or so. There are six foods that I have to completely cut out for at least a few months. Uh, one of them is wheat and I already eat gluten-free anyway, so that's not a big deal. So besides wheat, I have to completely cut out dairy, soy, eggs, seafood, and nuts. And that's just a difficult diet. It just is. But I am going to be very strict about it because I, you know, I don't want to have all these symptoms. I don't want to have all this pain anymore. So that's the EOE thing. The last kind of update on the stomach tumor is they don't know why I have it. They don't even fully know what it is because again, I think it's called a mass effect where it, it looks like something's pushing. And so it might be my liver, it might be my liver tumor grew, so now it's pushing on my stomach. It might be something else, but from the sonogram, from the endoscopy, from the CAT scan, they couldn't see. So what they're gonna have to do next is an endoscopy sonogram, I believe it's called. And so it's a much more intense endoscopy. I have to go to the hospital for it. The other endoscopy I just had at the doctor's office, this one I have to go to the hospital. It's only done by certain doctors because you need like extra training for it. So that's kind of the next step there. So that's kind of, I think all the updates really about my health right now. So just to kind of recap, my liver tumor grew. I now have a stomach tumor. Biopsy came back benign, but I need another endoscopy to just learn more about what it is. And I was also diagnosed with EOE, which is an issue with my esophagus. And I have to completely change my diet to see if it helps all the issues that I'm dealing with. And I have to be on that diet for several months. And they chose those foods because they're like the top allergens that generally could potentially cause EOE. From all the research I've done, they don't exactly know why people get it, but it seems like it's some sort of like allergic reaction 
and autoimmune disorder because my body is kind of like fighting itself and I have to just go on this diet and then, you know, get the endoscopy, just follow up with my doctor and go from there. And so this is just turning into a very long process but I'm really grateful for my doctors. I'm really grateful that I was even able to get all those procedures done within the last six weeks. And so just an update on like my symptoms now, I've lost 15 pounds. Uh, as a lot of you guys can tell, a lot of you guys have been commenting on my Instagram and stuff like, oh, like you look a lot thinner. I just have barely been eating. And so I did lose about 15 pounds, a little bit more than that actually, like 17-ish pounds in the last two months. I am on a very strict diet, but right now I'm starting to kind of add back some of the acid reflux foods and then I'm going to have to completely cut out all the EOE foods. And so I will do some like food videos soon because this is gonna be a huge change in my diet because a lot of you guys know I eat eggs all the time. I eat tuna fish all the time. I can't do that anymore. Soy, I'm okay cutting out because I've done that before. That's really hard though. Cutting soy out is one of the hardest things to cut out because soy is in like everything. Gluten I've already cut out, so that's not a huge deal. But then even nuts, like I eat a lot of peanut butter, a lot of things that have almond milk in it. A lot of gluten-free foods are made from like almond flour and stuff. So I gotta cut all those out. And then what's the last one? Soy dairy. If it helps me feel better, then that's what matters. If it helps heal anything, you know, that's what matters. And so it is a lot of big changes. It's been scary and it's been painful and it's been scary to eat a bite of food that might be a little new because I'm like, wait, can I eat this? I don't know. And again, you guys know I've dealt with a lot of food sensitivities and allergies and stuff in the past, but this is just a whole new level. This is a whole new level. I'm hopeful and I know that I can do it. I know that I can cut these foods out, but it is just, still a lot it's a lot and it's overwhelming and it's just been really hard i have been eating more the last couple weeks which is good so i haven't really lost any weight in the last like week or so which is great but in terms of pain i'm definitely not in as much pain as i was that baseball to the chest i don't have anymore sometimes i still do feel discomfort but that severe severe pain i don't have anymore i can drink water without pain and that is it feels like a miracle that I can drink water without pain. That was like the scariest part for me when all of this really started was that I couldn't drink water without feeling like I was getting hit in the chest. That was the scariest part for me. And that severe, severe chest pain lasted uh, like a week and a half or two weeks or so, but that's gone. I'm so grateful that's gone, but I'm still eating very small meals, very bland meals. And it's just gonna take me a little while to figure out my new diet going forward and to see what I can eat and to see, you know, really pay attention to how it makes me feel and stuff. And then after the endoscopy, the endoscopy sonogram, after that, I will, you know, hopefully figure out more about the stomach tumor because the doctors aren't even really sure if the stomach tumor has anything to do with my acid reflux or if it's just the EOE and stuff like that. And so there's still a lot of stuff, up, or at least a couple things still like up in the air that I still just need to get more tests and see. My doctor did tell me that I probably won't need surgery, but we still kind of won't fully know until the next endoscopy, but he said it's unlikely. Just kind of depending, like if this is really the cause for all my pain, then that might be a different story. And so, yeah, so that's really the full update. I gave you like all the details that I could possibly remember. There might be one or two things that I left out, but I think that's really the gist of it. And so I will, you know, I'll do a video in a couple weeks more about the food that I'm able to eat and stuff like that. And then once I get my endoscopy sonogram done, I will tell you guys the results of that. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope that I answered all your questions and I hope that this video like made sense. Again, there's a lot going on. So I hope that I like explained everything properly. If you have EOE and you wanna share like your experience with it, let me know in the comments. Um, but I'm not like necessarily looking for advice because we're all so different. And so so I am trusting my doctors. But if you just want to share your experience, I would love to read that. Um, you can leave a comment or DM me on Instagram. If you're going to leave a comment, just please be nice. Just please be nice. Like this, this was very hard for me to record. But I appreciate you guys being here. And I appreciate you subscribing to my channel, following me on Instagram. I am posting more on there. But again, I really appreciate you guys being here and being with me throughout this journey. Like I've been doing YouTube for a very long time, like seven years or something at this point. And it's been ups and downs and a roller coaster of life. 
but that's what life is and I want to be able to share that with you guys so thank you so much for being here and yeah I guess that's going to be it thanks again for watching and I hope that you guys have a wonderful day I love you Jesus loves you and I'll talk to you later bye